Welcome to Adobe Think Tank. Again, join the conversation using hashtag AdobeTT. And I'm with freelance science writer Matthew Hudson. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's a comfy, comfy space, right? Yeah, I feel like we're in a, a fish tank. Like, yeah, a little bit, yeah. a little bit. People are kind of surrounding, kind of see what we're doing. Yeah. When yeah. do they fill this with water? I want to be prepared for that. Uh, that's next year. Okay. Uh, so come back, we'll wear some floaties, and we'll rock it out. Okay, cool. Um, you know, what growth areas have you seen during the conference that, you know, or just in general in AI that you see have, you know, maybe the most sustainability or maybe have you most curious? Yeah. So there's one kind of uh, general area. Uh, generative models. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of an old idea, but there are new tools that are making it really more powerful. Um, things like GANs, uh, generative adversarial networks, yeah. um, or probabilistic programming languages. So it's basically, a lot of AI is labeling things, like classifying photos as a cat or a dog, or spam, not spam. So generative models actually produce new examples of things. Um, so it can produce new pictures of dogs or new mm. songs. Um, they're starting to make uh, videos. It can generate videos, sometimes realistic. <laughs> um, so it's, it's getting to the point where it's going to be a, a really great uh, sort of augmented creativity tool. So you can say, like, I have an idea. Now help me make this. Like, you can describe your idea, and it'll take that and generate something for you. Yeah. Um, so I think that's sort of a, it's not necessarily going to replace people, but it can help you express yourself. Yeah, because again, it's just a human programming a machine to try and get it to do something that, you know, maybe we yeah. can't do or would want to be freed up to do, you know, other things with, right? Yeah. But um, tech tends to allow us to do certain things. So if you see the evolution of the internet, right, you see that, you know, there's certain things we couldn't do until this allowed us to do it or right. had better bandwidth. So as we get better bandwidth, we get you know, better data processing. Where do you see us being able to do certain things? Mm -hmm. um, I'm excited about the potential in, of AI and machine learning in science and medicine. Yeah. Uh, so there's so much data out there. Uh, scientists are overwhelmed with data from uh, telescopes and microscopes and particle accelerators. Um, and they need a way to sort through all this and find patterns. Uh, so AI is really uh, offering new tools to, to search for patterns and to simulate uh, different aspects of the world. Um, so it might help discover new drugs, uh, find cures for diseases, or help us just understand the world. Um, or discoveries in physics might lead to new technologies, which could, which could then feed back into AI and kind of accel accelerate this loop. Um, and it could solve really big problems like, like energy, uh, it might lead to new technologies for fusion, for instance, or solar power, um, or desalination of seawater. So these are really big things like energy and fresh water. AI could help solve these giant uh, like global problems. That's great. And you actually just made a perfect segue for me because we're right. talking about these, these big issues right, that can yeah. be tackled. What are some of the everyday uses, maybe in the next year, that people will interact with AI the most on a day-to-day -day kind of basic level? Right. I think a lot of them are actually kind of invisible. Mm -hmm. Like, if you ask people what have been the biggest breakthroughs in AI, they might mention uh, AlphaGo or Watson um, or Siri and Alexa. Uh, Sensei. <laughs> Um, but a lot, of the, a lot of the applications that have the biggest impact right now um, that people actually might interact with, they might not realize they're interacting with it. Things like sure. search engines or personalization of uh, like recommendation engines um, or spam filters. And then there are things that are kind of operating in the background, uh, things like infrastructure and logistics, um, scheduling. Uh, so AI and machine learning are help figuring out sort of the scheduling and management of uh, how, to, uh, how to ship things around and how to manage people. Uh, and these are things that are, these are like trillion dollar industries. Uh, so AI is basically, in a lot of ways, just running the world in ways that we don't even really see. Like we'll know that our lives are more efficient, but we might not necessarily make that connection right. unless we work in the space where we talk about right. it. And right. finance is another area, yep. uh, assessing risk. Um, so lots of big decisions are made and, and even more small decisions are made. Uh, it sort of it permeates everything. 
And when you're, you know, permeating everything and you have big decisions to make, that kind of leads to ethical dilemmas, right? Right. It leads to kind of so. Just talk a little bit about the human impact, um, you know, down the road here or even currently with AI. Yeah. So ethics. So one big issue in ethics is fairness uh, and bias in AI. Um, so there are things like um, decisions that are made about people, like whether to hire someone or whether to date someone, um, you know, matchmaking algorithms, yeah. um, whether to uh, accept someone to a school, whether to offer someone bail. These are decisions that are made about people. And uh, AI is starting to uh, have an influence on these areas. And there's lots of potential for bias. Um, Fortunately, people are recognizing this and, and working on solutions. So there are ways to, for instance, um, de-bias word embeddings. So word embeddings are basically how a computer represents the meaning of a word. And it might use these meanings to sift through resumes or something like that. Right. And even if you're not programming the AI to be biased, it might automatically pick up on certain biases in the way that people use language. Sure. For instance, the word secretary might appear next to woman in books and magazines more than man. Yeah. And so a computer will automatically assess secretary with female. But there are ways to kind of de-bias that and take out the female component of words right. that aren't inherently. If we're gendered. conscious of that, if we have empathy, if we understand right. things. And I've had a couple conversations in the tank about, you know, being conscious of, all right, we have to have diversity and who's programming AI too. Yeah. So that's another, uh, another uh, big part of the solution. Um, diversifying the, the engineers and the people building and applying these AIs. So just recognizing that uh, programmers kind of have their own perspective on the world and they may not realize that their perspective is not going to be the same as uh, the people who are using it or people who are affected by it. So just bringing in um, you know, girls and minorities and teaching them um, how to, uh, helping them become comfortable and welcome into this yeah, space. That's a, welcome is a good word. Well, thanks so much. Yeah. And again, me. to learn more, go to adobethinktank.com.